Can it take you higher? Welcome back, vinyl community. Another vinyl update. Reggae rockin'. So nice. High up, not below. It's where we're gonna go. Sounds of the Cimarron's bringing us in. Cimarron's were a UK reggae group. Some say the first formed in the UK of uh, expatriate uh, Jamaicans immigrated to, uh, to England. Uh, they formed around 1967, backed up uh, many visiting uh, Jamaican acts, uh, were kind of a session band, and uh, eventually began releasing their own LPs. This is one of their early ones from 1978, appeared on the Polydor label they were briefly signed to. Uh, in an earlier video last year, I think I showed their live LP, which uh, also appeared on Polydor the same year. But this album is called Maka by the Cimarron's. Cool cover artwork. A track on here called Willin' Rock Against Racism was a single, I guess to tie in with the UK uh, movement of the time, which united um, punk artists with reggae artists, anti-racist uh, anti campaign. And this one is on a lovely translucent green vinyl, recent online pickup. As I've mentioned before, I'm starting to pick up a few things online, just stuff I would never find locally. So that is the Cimarron's. Didn't quite ever get the recognition of some of the other uh, big name UK reggae acts. I think their biggest hit was a cover of uh, Bob Marley's Talking Blues, which hit number one in Jamaica in the early 70s. Uh, they had kind of a penchant for mixing cover versions in with their originals, of which they do have some very strong roots originals. So uh, maybe that mix of cover versions uh, didn't help their, their career in the long run but some very solid LPs appeared from them. Moving on, I got a mix of a couple more reggae ones I'll share with you in a bit. Gonna get into some thrift finds, things uh, slowly starting to pick up there. I uh, found this one the other day in one of my thrift stores. Really nice shape, it was a new one to me, obviously 1960s, I think it's 1966 or so. It is the New Beats, Run Baby Run. Kind of, um, not quite garagey, I would say, but that kind of mid-60s pop rock and roll sound. Uh, I guess answering the uh, the onslaught of uh, Beatlemania, they had to come back with their own rock and roll sound. And this is a Canadian pressing on the Hickory label. When I look this up on Discogs, the Canadian version goes for some, uh, some pretty shocking prices compared to the U.S. pressing. It hasn't really sold, but, uh, but there's a few copies that are well up there in the double digits. A uh, few cover versions on here again. They do uh, Roy Orbison's Pretty Woman, Hang On Sloopy, The Beatles' uh, Help. But it's more the, the songs that are written for them that stand out more. Uh, they have a bit of that uh, Four Seasons falsetto kind of vocal sound going on. Just, uh, just classic uh, American harmonies, if you know what I'm getting at. The New Beats. I think they were based out of Nashville. Very nice condition copy, so that was pretty cool. Also found, I think it was, might have been the same day, the Association Renaissance. I think this is either their first or one of their very first. That is on the gold Warner Brothers label. A little bit of cover wear. Uh, somebody's wrote their name up here, but the vinyl is in great shape compared to how you usually find them. So big hits like Along Comes Mary, or Just Around the Corner. Don't think there are any huge hits off this one, but just quality kind of... Uh, Baroque 60s pop. Nice harmonies, nice arrangements. That's kind of what the association was known for. I also found this one I'd never actually seen before. Again, the cover's kind of separated. A little bit of ring wear, but the vinyl's in great shape. Cass Elliot, aka Mama Cass from the Mamas and Papas, went solo in the late 60s. This is, I think, her second to last solo album before her death. It's from 1972. The Road is No Place for a Lady. Just um, 
kind of hard to describe, but just lovely pop music, nice arrangements, a bit of a, almost a proto-disco feel, I would say, on a couple of tracks, which kind of got me wondering uh, how she would have fared a little bit later in the 70s as the disco wave really took over. Kind of interesting uh, to mull that over. Just uh, quality pop music, kind of underrated, I would say. Uh, one day I went to my local thrift fairs, or thrift store rather, sorry, and they had a, a bunch of um, Taiwan pressings, it turned out to be, from the late 1960s. You can tell these things are Asian pressings by the, of course, the writing on the labels and the back of the cover, but they also have these very flimsy paper sleeves with kind of, that are kind of laminated with plastic. I've seen them before. When I looked these up on Discogs, they were all... Um, most of them were listed as unauthorized pressings. They were pressed in Taiwan in the late 1960s and marketed to American soldiers then stationed in Southeast Asia. So uh, they had quite a, a few of these at the store one day. Uh, most of them were kind of your bog standard thrift fare though. Mantovani, Ray Kniff and stuff like this. But uh, I found a couple of more interesting ones. Uh, probably the one I was most interested in was Peter and Gordon in London for Tea. Almost kind of a psychedelic looking cover there. Again, see that real flimsy paper. You can actually, uh, some of these you actually see through them on the inside. And uh, tell the labels there, it's got the writing on there. Uh, I think this was their second last album. They, of course, were known for some of their, their big hits like uh, I Won't Stay in a World Without Love, which was written by uh, Lennon and McCartney. They were friends with them. But uh, quality kind of folk rock meets the Mersey beat, I would say. Not quite, kind of on the cusp of going a little baroque or psychedelic in places. Nice one from them. This is one I would never have bought if, except it was one of these, uh, these Asian pressings, but it's uh, Dean Martin. Don't ever remember me, I'm the one who loves you. And the interesting thing about this one, translucent red vinyl. Again, Taiwan pressing, late 60s. Also found Righteous Brothers, just once in my life. I have the normal version of this. See that there? I kind of like the, the crude kind of artwork on these things. And last up from these ones, Petula Clark, Songs from My Heart. I couldn't find this one on Discogs. I'm guessing it's some kind of weird compilation or whatever. Starts out with her big hit Downtown, which I've always liked. Uh, I tend to find her LPs kind of middle of the road for me. Uh, she's got a couple of quite a few French songs on here, which kind of gets that yee yee vibe going. And uh, this album actually kind of swings more than uh, what I've heard from her before. And another key factor, orange vinyl. So those were some cool finds. A uh, couple more thrifty ones. Millie Jackson, I found two by her on two separate visits. I think it might have been the same store. Uh, this one is Free and in Love from 1976, I believe, on the Spring label, which she recorded many albums on. She, in the early 70s, had put out an album called Caught Up, which was, I guess, something of a concept album. I don't own it yet. Never seen it around. But it introduced her style of kind of a soulful, bit funky at times. But uh, she'll have these extended songs where she goes into kind of a monologue. She would call them raps where she would uh, just kind of do a spoken word. She was known for her uh, some of her raunchier lyrics, I guess. She would kind of uh, put it all out there in a, a very forthright manner about uh, romantic relationships, let's put it that way. And uh, she basically carries on that format on these two albums here. And uh, the interesting thing about this one, when I uh, looked inside, it has an inner sleeve that somebody's written poems and doodled all over. You can see all these... Uh, how well that'll show up. You can see all these little doodles and sketches. A couple of poems. Dark room, small white piles of sheets, ready for new beds. Fifteen bucks later, some guy has his heart ripped away, and she just smiles. Checks her email and plays her favorite song. So, obviously a little bit later than the vintage of this record. I think there's a date of 2003 on here. Kind of fun when you find that little ephemera, kind of ephemera in with the record. And the other one by Millie was A Moment's Pleasure. This is from 1979. Still on good old spring records. 
and uh, getting into a, a little bit more disco on here, but basically the same format. She's got these one or two songs on every album that are a little bit longer, and she goes into these kind of raps, and uh, it's uh, every one of them is kind of like a little concept of her uh, her uh, going out and uh, looking for guys and romantic entanglements. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Fun stuff and funky. Uh, last couple of pickups, online ones, reggae again. I got this one by Johnny Osborne, Water Pumping. Kind of a funny title. The title track has been one of my favorites by him for many years. It's appeared in 1983 on the iconic Greensleeves label out of England. Uh, a couple years, or a few years before, Johnny Osborne had returned from a spell in Canada. Uh, recorded the classic Rootsy Truth and Rights LP at Studio One, just as kind of the... Um, the reggae reggae vibe was changing from roots into the dan the early dance hall sound. I talked a bit about this in my um, my dance hall video and mentioned Johnny Osborne. This is one of those LPs he put out. He was uh, cranking them out. This one is produced by Prince Jammy, not yet King. That would be a couple more years down the road, 1985. Uh, it's got uh, Sly Dunbar on drums, Robbie Shakespeare on bass. Uh, Earl Chinna Smith on guitar, mixed by Scientist, who is releasing the, the classic dub albums on, on the Greensleeves label at the same time. Uh, this is the title track, as I said, has been a favorite of mine for a long time. Kind of a, a just gentle dance hall tune. It's kind of a funny title, but it just refers to a dance, the dance move that was popular at the time. And uh, the whole album is kind of in that gently rocking kind of st style at. Uh, of that song. It's got a couple of heavier moments on here. Uh, recut of Purify Your Heart, which is one of his rootsier tunes that he'd done earlier. Different version of that. So that was a nice one to pick up. And last one I'll share with you, another recce one. This is Earl George, one and only. This is from 1978 on the UK Burning Sounds label. It's produced by Phil Pratt. Uh, basically, lovers rock here, I guess you would say, or very, very soulful lovers kind of reggae. Uh, George uh, Earl George was also known as George Faith. His real name was Earl George Lawrence. Uh, most kind of much of his uh, recordings were released on various configurations of his real name, like Earl George. Uh, he, in 1977, he hooked up with Lee Scratch Perry, who was then at a furiously creative high point with his famous Black Ark Studio. He released the um, the album called To Be a Lover under the name George Faith, which Lee Perry uh, dubbed him. And uh, that proved to be uh, something like a Black Ark classic of the time, showcasing a bit of a more soulful, romantic kind of mood, uh, as opposed to the, the deep roots that the Black Ark sound was known for at the time. Uh, there was supposed to be a second album. It was never completed. Lee Perry's kind of uh, mental state was deteriorating toward the end of the 70s. He'd been hugely prolific, had various pressures weighing on them. Also, uh, I think a deteriorating relationship with Island Records, which had uh, picked up the To Be A Lover LP. So Earl George went back to his uh, variations of his real name and working for other producers, including Phil Pratt. Uh, you would also uh, record for Alvin Ranglin, who is uh, well known for his work with Gregory Isaacs and the Maytones. And he's got uh, covers of um, Blue Swede's Hook Out of Feeling on this one, which actually works really well. It's got a nice horns uh, riff that goes through it. Very nice version of it. Uh, some originals on mostly originals. He's also got uh, Love Is Something, which he later did over again for Alvin Ranglin. So very nice soulful reggae here. So that's what I've got for you today, guys. I'm going to keep this one brief. I've got enough for at least one more video, but I'm going to try and keep them a little short. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in once again. Appreciate all your, your comments. Take care, guys, and cheers.